out of the son of a God that keeps on making the way. I'm glad for every now and then situation that gets so bad that you can't see your way out. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. For a topic for a brief minute, I want to leave with you. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? What I see? Let's buy that word of prayer. I'm going to tell you, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this great opportunity. Lord, right now, I ask that you allow me to decrease. So that you may increase, Lord, and hide me behind your cross. Amen. Lord, now I have to make the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are truly my strength and my redeemer. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. 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 Do you see what I see? Well, there are times where we believe that our eyes are playing tricks on us. Uh -huh. When we see certain things that we believe, they can't be true. Uh -huh. So in order to confirm if what we're seeing is, re is really true, we ask another who is with us, do you see <laughs> what I see? All right. We see many examples of this. Well, oftentimes when you are traveling at night, uh -huh. you can see some glowing, some eyes glowing on the side of the road. Amen. And you ask the person riding beside you, did you see that? Amen. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no. Well, or, 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 or when you watch a scary movie, 
There's always something trying to get one of the star characters from behind. And after a while, one of the people that's with them take a glance of something just shooting right by behind them. And then he asked them, did you see or did you see what I just saw? Or, or, or maybe uh, if we go to the Bible, if we go to Noah's time, and, and I can only imagine the people who were laughing at Noah uh, whenever he was building the ark. And then when he was all shut up in the ark, and then they felt something on their cheeks. Realized it had never rained. Come on now. So, 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 and, and, and then they saw a drop of water hit maybe uh, on the porch uh -huh. or, 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 or maybe in a bowl and then they probably look beside themselves and ask the person beside them did you see that <laughs> or, 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 or maybe the brothers of, of joseph when they came to the king in, in need of food during the great drought and then when they came to ask for help the first face that they saw in leadership was none other than their brother who they for me, he would be murdered or placed in this slavery. I can only imagine the brothers looked at each other and said, Do you see that? Right. Because they didn't realize that, that what God had done for them. Joseph. Or, or, or maybe you can relate to the people of Jericho. Mm -hmm. Well, when they when they saw Jacob and, 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 and the children of Israel just marching around the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They marched around the wall seven days, and then all of a sudden they shout, and the wall came yeah. down. Yeah. Now, I can only imagine the people of Jericho behind the wall yeah. looked at each other and said, yeah. did you just see that? Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or maybe, or, or maybe, you were part of the Philistines. The Philistines. Uh, 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 when they saw this little young man named David yeah. come out against Big Goliath, and all he had was five smooth stones yeah. and a sling. Uh -huh. And when he took those stones and tossed it and it knocked down Big Goliath, I, I can imagine the other soldiers were did you just see yeah. what I saw? Yeah. All right. Or, 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 or even the face of the disciples. Uh, whenever Jesus, after his resurrection, walked through the room that they locked up all the doors in fear that they were next. Right. And Jesus walked through the wall. I can imagine the look on their face and they asked each other, did you just see that? Yeah. Oh my God. Well, as we look at our scripture, we see Paul serving as noise for the church at Corinth as they are driving on the shoulder of the road. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. As we look at our text, we will see that it begins with therefore. And whenever we see therefore in the scripture, we need to see what is it therefore. Yeah. So if we look back in the first part of chapter 4 in verse 8 and 9, we see Paul says, We are pressed on every side, uh -huh. but not crushed. Yeah. Well, Perplexed, but not in despair. Yeah. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Yeah. Right. Now let us break down these verses into sections. We're going to start with, We are hard pressed on every side. Yeah. Hard pressed is translated afflicted in chapter 16. Yeah. In the Greek text, the identical expression occurs in chapter 7. Verse 5, when it is rendered trouble on every side. Yeah. But Paul asks, outside were afflictions, inside were fears. Thus, every side meaning inside and outside were repressed. Uh -huh. The next section we can break it down to, but not crushed. Even though we are suffering internally and external afflictions, we are not destroyed. All right. uh, next, we go to being uh, uh, perplexed. It says, and, and perplexed is derived from, from two Greek words. The word for no plus the word for wait. Mm -hmm. Thus, perplexed means to be at a loss. Yeah. One is perplexed when one sees no way out. Yeah. All right. Next, but not in despair. Despair means utter loss. So even though Paul saw no way out, All right. mm -hmm. he still wasn't lost. Yeah. All right. 
Next, he goes to persecuted. Uh, the picture behind the word persecuted is pursued by someone determined to harm someone else. My God. But it says, but not abandoned. Even though all of the trials Paul was facing, God still never left him. Uh -huh. And then he goes struck down. Mm -hmm. When Paul refers to struck down, he is literally referring to being stoned in a crowd in Lystra and left for dead. Yeah. Acts 14 and 19. Yeah. But the last thing Paul says, but, it, but not destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. This means that Paul was not killed. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The Lord spared Paul's life so that he may continue to preach the good news yeah. mm -hmm. and to testify to God's deliverance. Yeah. So even though our trials are pressing us internally and externally, we are not crushed. Even though we don't see the way out of our situation, we need to realize that we are not lost. Even though we are being persecuted for the sake of the gospel in this world, we are not to, we have not been abandoned by the Lord. Uh -huh. Even though we may be potentially physically struck down, God has spared our lives and not allowed us to be destroyed. Oh, somebody knows what I'm talking about. Right. Paul goes on to say that we endured all of this because one day the one who raised Christ from the dead will also raise us with him and be presented with us, with present us with him in his This leads us to our foundation text, which is found in verse 16, which declared, Therefore, we do not lose heart because of what was just said because of what paul explained to them previously the scripture is telling them therefore uh -huh. since you know what i just told you uh -huh. since you know that you're going to go through some things oh, yeah. but god is going to still be with you therefore yeah. we do not lose heart mm -hmm. yeah. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day Thank you. by day. Yes. So the first thing you need to know today is we must not lose heart. All right. All right. We must not lose heart. When we talk about the word heart, I'm I'm not referring to that with beats in your chest, yeah. but as the courage to carry yeah. on. Yeah. In sports, some someone is considered to have a lot of heart when they perform uh, in a way that's not expected for a person of their physical stature. Yeah. For example, a football player named Ronnie Lott. Yeah was in a playoff game and in his playoff game he was making a tackle and in making a tackle part of his uh, the tip of his finger about right here was torn off Jesus. and it was hanging he had a couple of options he could wrap it up and watch the game for the sideline or he can go ahead to the hospital he chose option three he said cut it off so they cut off the rest of his finger he wrapped it up and he went back in the game and he played on because they said Ronnie Lott had heart. Yeah. All right. This is a very important principle. With the proper focus on our future, with Christ will give us the power to endure any types of trouble. We need to realize that day by day this temporary vessel, this mortal flesh, this eternally, this eternal house is perishing day by day and has no renewal. But the inward man is renewed on a daily basis. Although the external is degenerating and dying, the internal does not lose heart, but is renewed, regenerated, and revitalized. So, so even if those knees may be a little achy, your spirit is still being renewed. Uh, even though those problems may seem a little weary and you may be a little tired, and you think that you have been on this road for mighty long, now, I come to tell you that the spirit it is still revived. Uh, even though that back may stiffen up every now and then. And when you try to get out of the bed, uh, you feel a little pain. But what you need to realize is all that is is this temporary message. Because your spirit is still being renewed every 
every day. And even when the doctor gives you a, 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 a diagnosis hey. that's not too hey. good. And, and he says that, 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 that your life may not be here yeah. for a little while longer. You can still rejoice. But even though your body may be back in your pain, you need not lose heart. Because God is still renewing your spirit day by day. That's why it don't matter how old or how young you are. It, it doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter? Because even though you may be 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, your spirit has still been renewed every single day. So you still have a reason to praise Him, even though my body may not feel too good, but my spirit is feeling right right about now. Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about. So you need not lose heart. Amen. But now that our heart is in the right place. <laughs> verse 17 now declares, For our light and momentary troubles uh -huh. Uh -huh, are achieving for us eternal glory that's far outweighs them all. Thank you, Lord. So the next thing that I want to leave with is we need to gain a proper perspective. Amen. All right. Gain a proper perspective. Seeing in the perspective of eternity, Christians' difficulties, whatever they may be, diminish in importance. Mm -hmm. When we weigh out the afflictions with the glory, the glory outweighs our afflictions. Uh -huh. In this text, Paul focuses on the future, allows them to access problems properly and see how small they were uh, compared to his eternal results. Yeah. The songwriter Paul Jones wrote a song that spoke to the heart of what this verse is saying. The song was entitled, I Won't Complain. Yeah. And the yeah. section of the song says, uh, uh, all of my good did uh -huh. outweigh my bad oh, yeah. so I won't complain. This, this song, whenever I hear it or sing, it helps me regain my focus yeah. on what's important. Yeah. So whenever my trials come, and, 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 and when they place me on, 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 on a point where I, when I feel like I don't know what I'm going to do, I don't have to place them on my spiritual scale. Yeah. And when I place them on my spiritual scale, there, there, there is roughly no movement. Yeah. Because what God has done for me yeah. is so great that there is no eternal glory that God is going to give me when we You see, even when the gas prices were real high, uh, whenever I would go to fill up my truck and it would be $95 for one tank of gas, Amen. you got to realize that that was just a single and momentary problem. Why? Why well, I realize that, 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 that my father has the cattle on a thousand years. I realize that it's Forsaken, nor have I seen beg for bread. So I had to gain proper perspective. Yeah. Where gas may be high, but the power that my God has is yeah. high. Yeah. Yeah. Or when my own health began uh, 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 to fade, I needed to place it in proper spiritual yeah. perspective. Yeah. Even though I may have been in a hospital, yeah. even though the doctor may not know what was going yeah. on, yeah. I realized that I saw.
For what is unseen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. For what is seen is temporary. Mm -hmm. But what's unseen is eternal. Thank you, Lord. Well, the last thing I'm going to leave mm -hmm. with you today before I take my seat. Amen. Is to fix your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. 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 Fix your eyes yes. Yes. on Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. For the experiences and the circumstances of this present life often painful and perplexing are what is visible to us as Christians. Mm -hmm. But these are merely a season in our lives yeah. and are therefore it is temporary. Yeah. Yeah. To fix our eyes on these things would cause us to lose heart. Yeah. By contrast, the unseen realities which are no less real for being invisible and eternal and imperishable. Yes. What I come to tell you today is your eyes need to be staying focused on Jesus. Yes. But when our eyes are focused on Jesus, uh -huh. we oftentimes don't allow the things around our circumstances yes. to dictate to us what is going to happen. Yes. If you don't believe me, yes. you could always ask Brother Peter. Yes. Because yes. Brother Peter, when he stepped out yes. on the water, yes. he can tell you that everything was all right. Yeah. I was walking fine. Yeah. Uh -huh. But then I, I begin. Yeah. I begin to take my eye uh -huh. off Jesus. Uh -huh. And when my eyes yeah. begin to look all around, yeah. that's when I begin to sin. Yeah. So if Peter were here today, he would come and tell you. You need to fix your eyes on Jesus. Or oh, when your eyes are on Jesus, you can walk on the waters of your life and not even realize what you are doing. He said, believe me. When you believe in Jesus and you fix your eyes on him and not the storm. For your Jesus, when he's in your boat, has the power to calm any storm that comes your way. I come to tell you today that everything is going to be all right. You may be saying, Pastor, how do you know everything is going to be all right? I know because I have proper perspective.
Φωνάξει. Now, 